everyone, welcome to the grand reveal of what the antibody was that I added to the patient we did last time. Okay, if you have not watched those videos yet, please make sure you go and watch the antibody uh, screening videos and the antibody identification videos. Um, antibody identification videos. So we have um, the screen from that. We saw that the auto control was negative, so that means we do not have an allo antibody forming to, new, tran to newly transfused cells. We do not have an auto antibody um, forming to the patient's own cells, and we do not possibly have any drug interactions causing a positive here. We did see that there was a positive screen, so that meant we had to do a positive, or sorry, we had to do an antibody identification panel. So we ended up having positive cells here, but a negative auto control was which was expected and same um, interpretation there. And so we have um, reactivity at all three phases, immediate spin, 37, and AHG. And there was a higher reactivity in the immediate spin or room temperature phase than the uh, 37 and the AHG. So um, since they all seem to match, we're assuming that there is one antibody here, okay? And since it reacted um, most profoundly in the immediate spin phase, I'm going to say that it's an IgM, okay? So it looks like, you know, heating it up, it makes it go away. Um, that is... Um, not very technical, but um, that is what you're looking at. So it reacted at all three phases. We're assuming it's an allo antibody because of the negative autocontrol. Okay, and then it's going to be IgM because the higher reactivity is in the immediate spin. And um, that would be considered a cold antibody just because it's reacting at uh, room temperature. Um, Okay, so when we identify the antibody, we're going to be able to answer this block here. Uh, for those of you that don't know, this is a um, printout of our LIS that I made for our program. And it is um, showing you all the results that we have done so far of this patient, which you have seen in other videos as well. This patient is an O positive patient and that's already, um, that's already recorded on the identification panel. So what I'm going to do to start out is I'm going to highlight, just so that you can view all of this better, I'm going to highlight the lines of the donor cells that the patient was positive in. Um, I did get a wonderful uh, birthday present from my husband and my children, and so you can actually see that uh, present. I'm using a wide angle lens. So if this looks too funky for you all and you don't like this view, then please leave a comment in the comment section of the video to let me know if this is worthwhile doing again. And um, I will um, respond to your feedback and, and see if we can test it out maybe a little more and see if I can do better. So hold on just a second. Okay, so I'm back and I have just highlighted those, um, those cell lines and I wanted to also point this out. Um, I make a cheat sheet for my students uh, so that they can um, remember how to interpret an antibody identification panel. So let's go through this so far. So, so far we have a negative auto control which um, we said was an allo antibody, okay? And we talked about what a um, positive would have possibly meant, all right? We saw that it's reacting at all three phases, all right? And if it's in immediate spin, then we're um, presuming it's an IgM antibody. And as you go through, it's also saying, okay, if it reacts with 37, it may be cold if the reactions at room temperature are fading. So the reaction that started here is fading, and that's exactly what we have. So that's really, really cool. All right, um, the reaction strength. Well, um, I 
we're pretty much going to have to wait on this one and honestly the ones all the way down here because that means that we've ruled stuff out okay so let's go through here and rule some things out so when we're doing a rule out um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the negative cell lines all right and you go through and you're going to look at what um, what we have that reacted in that negative line okay and the reason we would rule that out is because if it reacted when we had no um, reactivity over here, if it's positive, if the antigen is there in a non-reactive line, then we can presume that that is not the antibody that we're looking for, okay? Some of these show dosage as well, which means that when they're homozygous, so if we look at um, the Lewis, the Louis A and Louis B, this would be considered homozygous because these are inherited together and um, the patient, or sorry, the donor, only got a Louis B from both parents, okay? Did not get Louis A from either of their parents. So you have two uh, chromosomes, you know, you get um, from your parents, one from each parent and then it's represented here. So the ones that are inherited together, we would uh, want to look at, especially the ones that uh, show dosage to see if we are um, needing to interpret the reactions that way, okay? So I just went through and circled the ones that are inherited together that you would need to look at in order um, to see if that's actually showing dosage or not. Okay, so off camera, I just went and um, wrote in uh, which um, the arrows indicate the ones that will show dosage. Uh, Kel and Shalano are only occasionally. Um, so this would be Duffy, Kid, Lou, um, sorry, not Lewis, uh, M, N, and S, and Lutheran. Okay, and then I went through, and since we're figuring that this is IgM, I went through and I put the ones that are IgM most of the time. Okay, so all these other ones most of the time are IgG, but um, many of them can actually be IgM as well. Um, this is just getting too crowded, so I can't really write that. So predominantly, all of these except the ones that I labeled are IgG. Okay, so IgM would be the Lewis, the P, M and N, M and N, <laughs> and uh, Louis A. Sorry, Lutheran A. Okay, so um, that's what we have here. So let's try to do this and hold the camera at the same time. This is going to be amazing. Okay, so we're on the first, um, we're on the first line and we're going to go through, because um, it's a negative line, we're going to go through and the ones that show dosage, we're going to only cross out the ones that are homozygous, okay, so like the C, all right, so um, D is reactive here, C is reactive here, and it does show dosage, so we're okay with this because little c is um, negative, so that means this is homozygous, all right? Um, we can't really cross these two out. It's, um, I mean, you can in the fact that they're reacting, um, but a, some some antigens, it's not really good to cross out heterozygous ones because you don't know if the reactivity um, is just not showing up because of how low uh, the antibody actually is. So that would be like with Duffy. Um, but we're not really going to have that problem here. So um, Chilano we can get rid of. So I'm just going through Duffy A we can get rid of. Um, kid would be one of the ones that you don't really want to do that, but it's going to probably be crossed off down here. Um, Louis B, you can get rid of the P. Um, these two, M and N, we're not going to do that yet because, again, IgM and shows dosage. 
um, S we can get rid of, Lutheran, B, and XG. Okay, so um, we'll do another line, and then I can do, um, I guess, the rest off camera. Maybe we'll do two more. Okay, so we already had um, D crossed out. All right, and we had C, big C crossed out, but we can do we can do that again. Um, e, C, W, Chilano again. Um, see, now we can cross the kid B out, B, J, K, B out, because it's homozygous and it's on a negative line. So, and same with the Lewis A. All right, so that's the kind of thing you want to do. Still not really able to cross these two out, but we can cross S out, Lutheran B. All right, let's do a couple more. So again, we're still able to cross that one out. Um, now we can cross out little C. We can cross out big E. Chilano is... Um, a very high incidence <laughs> uh, antigen, so you're going to find that you can cross that one out a lot of times. Okay. I'm just going through. So JKA, um, we can now cross out because that's homozygous. And oh, we already did Louis B. And we can cross out this time because it's a negative line and it's reactive here, or, or it's present there. And, okay, so let me do another one. C, little c, little e. Basically getting the ones that we already had. Um, and we already crossed these guys out. So if you do it this way, you're going to notice that you can, um, you'll be crossing out the same ones that you did before, most likely. I'm doing it this way because I like to show students this way so that if they do mess up, um, they didn't cross this out and have to figure out um, from the header line uh, where it was that they went wrong. So if they do it in the actual donor line, until you get really, really good at this, um, it's good to do it this way so that you can find where you went wrong or your professor can come behind you and check you because um, he or she can see what exactly you're doing on the line instead of, um, you know, if I found that I could cross out D, you know, crossing it out up here, which is what um, experienced people uh, would do. Okay, so while you're learning, make sure you're doing it this way so that you can um, figure out what it is uh, that made you cross it out and um, why. Okay, so this is our positive line, all right, which we will talk about in a minute. So I am going to go through and do the rest of the negative lines, and then I'll show you what I come up with so that this um, isn't a really, really extremely long um, video. All right, so I just did all of them, and I am going to end this video and um, do part two uh, because the video is getting long, and I don't want it to just cut out on me um, in regard to what I can post on YouTube. So um, see part two, and we're going to figure out who this actually is. All right, see you in the next video.